In this video, we're going to go over the reporting system in Maintenance Pro Web. Um, so reports are a way to grab data that's in the system and export it to like a PDF file, a spreadsheet file, um, or if you want to send it to a printer, things like that. Um, before we delve too far to the report section here, um, we should note that every list in the system, so for example, this equipment listing here, um, I can grab a PDF or a spreadsheet of this or print it out without going um, to the report menu item itself. So if I just simply wanted an equipment list or a parts list, I can pull it up here. On the top right next to the new button, uh, there's these three lines. Uh, if you click on this menu, you'll see the options for print or export to CSV if I want it as a spreadsheet. Um, that'll just download it to your computer. Um, if I choose print, depending on what browser you're using, um, the PDF should appear in the view. And then from here, you can download it to your computer to save it somewhere, like if you want to attach it to an email, um, or you can click on the printer button if you want to send it straight to a printer. And of course, you can do this with any, um, any list, so like inventory list, purchase order list, employee list, you can do it all there on any of those sections. Um, there is a customize option here, which you'll see in the main reports as well. This is to allow you to check and, and kind of choose which columns you want to view. Um, any columns that are checked here are going to print out on your report. So if you want to hide or show something specific, you'll want to go to customize, um, choose the columns that you want, and then click on save on the bottom. So if I wanted to, let's say, grab the serial number, the make and model, and the year. So I'll go ahead and check these and save it. So now I've got these columns here on the right side. If I go and try to print this list out now, those columns are going to show up on my PDF report. Now notice it gets a little bit squished here. So with PDFs and printing out, there's only so much data you can fit on a page. So just keep that in mind. You might have to kind of play around with how many columns you're displaying. Um, if you're exporting to CSV, you won't have that issue because on the spreadsheet, you can resize the columns uh, as, as much as you want. So that's how to get each list out of the system. So let's say I want to run a formal report now. So to do that, I'm going to click on the reports option on the left menu. Inside of the reports menu, I have a number of categories on the left hand side in gray. If you click on a category name, you'll be able to see all reports that uh, fall underneath that category. I can click on a name of a report if I want to display it on the right hand side. So if I want to run an equipment list, I'll go ahead and click on that. The preview automatically shows up on the right. There are quite a few reports here. Um, I'll go through the most commonly used ones. So the equipment listing is used often. Maintenance cost, um, if you want to see how much a unit has cost you within a certain date range, this is useful. The maintenance detail report will show you each individual task that's been posted to a unit. Operating cost report will show you everything, including expenses and fuel, um, not just uh, maintenance parts and labor. We have our fuel cost and fuel detail report. So if you enter fuel transactions in the system, you can grab totals from those. Um, usage reports, um, this will tell you how far a unit has gone either hours or, or miles, whatever's on the odometer uh, within the date range that you specify. And then we have a report specific for expenses, inspections, repairs, and so on. Underneath employees, if you're on the enterprise version, we have a signed in and signed out. So if you have uh, equipment that's been signed out by somebody, you can um, view a list of it here. Inside of inventory, the most commonly used ones are a stock value, which just tells you everything that you have in the system as far as parts go and how much it's all worth based on the quantity and the cost. Um, usage summary, this will give you a listing of all the parts and how many of those you've used within a specific date range. Usage detail goes a step further and actually tells you which unit you've used the parts on. So if you want to say, okay, I want to know parts such and such, which units have I posted this to in the past year or past three months, this would be the report to do so. We have fuel tank reports, and that's another enterprise feature. If you have a fuel tank um, site and you pull fuel out of that, um, you can grab a report here. Purchase orders, that just tells you which ones are open, uh, closed. 
Job sites is another um, enterprise only feature. Um, if you have a job site and you've signed an equipment out to it, you can view it here. Technicians, uh, employee summary, for example, if I pull this up, this should give us a list of employees along with how many hours they've been posted for labor um, within the date range that I specify on the top. Task reports, so this will tell me if I have tasks that are overdue, repairs or preventive maintenance, uh, which uh, tasks need to be done for your equipment. You can also do this by a specific date or by who's assigned to those tasks. You can grab a list of repairs and you can also grab a list of uh, work order tickets, so open and closed ones. So as you can see, there's quite a few reports. Over time, we always add more. Um, so if there's a report that you would like, you know, feel free to reach out to us and say, hey, I could use this report and, and we'll look and see if we can add that into the system for you. Now, you'll notice on the top, these filters here. So I've got a location filter and I've got a status filter. Depending on which report you're running, some of these filters may or may not show up. So on our equipment listing report, I don't have a reason to show a date range because I'm just printing out my list. But if I'm doing something like a maintenance cost report, I want to specify exactly when, uh, what date ranges are for the cost calculations. So I don't want it necessarily for all time. I want maybe the last few weeks or last couple of months, you know, whatever you want to place there. So with this uh, filter here, I can click on it. And we've got some built-in filters, commonly used ones that, that more than likely you'll need like the last 30 days. Um, last 12 months, but if there's a very specific date range you want to run this report for, you can click on the custom button here, and then you can specify a specific date range um, in the past, in this case, because this is a cost report, or in the future, if you're running, let's say, our, our tasks due report, if you want to know, okay, it's due in the future. Um, I can probably show you that here. So let's say tasks by date. So I can go and say I want tasks that are due in the next 12 months, upcoming tasks. And then we went over uh, our status filter here. So we're pulling up an equipment list. I believe this shows up, yeah, it shows up on the cost report too. So you can say, I only want to run this report for equipment that's active. You don't necessarily want inactive or sold units here. So you have that option as well. For our inventory reports, they're not really based on location, they're based on warehouses. Uh, inventory warehouse is a physical location of where the equipment is located. Um, so you can go here and run this based on a specific warehouse or even a specific category in that warehouse. If I go for a location-based report, I can pull up a general location and filter by that, or um, I can do categories inside the location. So again, you can filter out these reports any way you want. You can also utilize the search box on the top right if you want to find something specific. So in this uh, report, if I want to pull up a tow truck, I can simply type that in. Um, any of the columns that are on the report preview, it'll try to search by. Uh, and the same thing I showed you on the listings earlier, if you hit the three lines on the top right, the print option will send this off to a PDF which you can print or download and, and email as an attachment if you want. You can export to CSV, so you can convert this into a spreadsheet. And then I also have a customized option here. And this looks very similar to what we pulled up earlier. So you'll have all your checkboxes here. So if you wanna hide or show certain things on your report, uh, you're welcome to go through these lists and, and customize this to your liking. And then click save on the bottom when you're done. Um, something I didn't go over previously is this display length. So if you have a quite a long report, um, let's say right now I have this set to 25 rows per page. If I have more than 25 units here, I'll have a next button on the bottom. Um, so if you wanna show more on the first page without having to hit next, uh, you can scroll down here and set this to 100. That's the maximum that we have. Um, and then save it. And then your report will reflect that. So it'll show 100 records on the first page and then the next page and the next page. Thanks for watching. You can find more video tutorials on our YouTube channel. For more information about our software products, please visit our website at mtcpro.com.